G'day everybody. So we're back for night two. We are going to be quenching our blades. Um, just for the sake of, you know, not overloading people or having people sitting here for too long. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you one complete quenched blade and uh, we'll see how we're going for people sticking around and whether or not people want to see me do a second blade. I've um, currently had the forge heating up now for roughly about 20-ish minutes. Just going to pull this fire brick out. And we're going to stick the blades in. So, for those of you who are watching last night, you would have seen the Kiritsuki, which is the Japanese chef's knife, which we'll place in, remembering to keep the bevel at the back of the blade face down. And also, we have its bigger brother, the Nakiri, which is the vegetable chopper. It's essentially a cleaver for vegetables. Also, because of the flat edge along the bottom, it's really, really, really good for mincing uh, all your herbs and stuff like that. Because you get that full surface contact with the, uh, with the chopping board, which is great. If you joined us last night, I did ask, give us a like, drop us a comment, let me know that you're there. Otherwise, I won't be able to see you, unfortunately. Um, for those of you who don't know, we do have a YouTube channel going. Um, I did intend to be doing all these sorts of videos on YouTube, but YouTube won't let me go live without a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't already, I would really, really appreciate it if you could jump on over to YouTube and give us a, uh, a like there make sure you hit the little bell notification as well so you get any of the updates if you want to see more of what we're showing uh, the love there would be greatly greatly appreciated so while I was uh, he, uh, annealing the blades last night I didn't really have a great deal of a chance to uh, to watch everybody's comments so while I'm heating up the blades and letting people pop on and come and see the videos if you've got any comments feel free to drop them in now um, while I'm you know not doing anything other than talking to you guys that would be great I'd really really appreciate that also if there's anything that you guys want to know about these knives drop that below too um, you know people are always asking can you do this can you do that what knife would I use for this? Chuck it in. I'd love to know because at the end of the day, you know, I'm here to learn, but I'd also like to teach as many people as I can. G'day, Mikey. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's not every day that, uh, that you get to see this sort of stuff. It's not every day that you get to do this stuff. So, I feel pretty lucky. What does a knife cost? That's a great question, Reese. Um, depending on the knife. I mean, what we do and how we do it takes a real long time. So each of these knives have about 40 odd hours in them. It's all hand sanding, cutting everything by hand, doing all the, the right steps, the annealing, the heat treating. The average knife costs around 450, um, thereabouts. Um, but yeah, there's just so much love that goes into it. I mean, I, I care about these knives so much that if I feel like somebody's just going to use and abuse the blade, then I actually won't put the time and effort in. I won't sell it to them. We want all of these knives to, uh, to be appreciated, appreciated and cared for, you know, like what we do. Thanks very much for joining us, Diana. We, uh, we certainly do love the knives, and as Mel pointed out last night, you know, I've got to get around to making one for ourselves. That would, uh, that, that should be next on the goal before spring comes, and 
we're full steam ahead back into the bees. Hello girl Sam, how are you? Thanks for coming along. <laughs> I'll get there one day Mel, you know, shiny things. For those of you who have been playing along at home and who have seen the opals as well, the, uh, the teardrop shaped bl uh, black opal has been dropped off at the jewelers and hopefully in the near future we're going to see some pictures of that coming through once it's set as a pendant. We've also got more black opal on its way from Lightning Ridge. Not gonna lie, I'm more than just a little bit excited. So, if you see right here, that's our quenching tank. I'm not sure how well you're gonna see it. I'm gonna do my best to show you when it's time to quench the, uh, the blade going in. But, I think we're about good to start. If you guys do have any questions while I'm going, um, please drop them below and once the video is done, I will uh, do my best to answer you all. <laughs> I'm a little bit excited about the pendant too, Mel. Can't wait. Alright, so again, box jaw tongs. Grabbing onto the tang of the handle. The tang is also commonly known as the handle in knife terms. So if, you're a, if you ever hear anybody talking about the tang, it's the... It's essentially the handle before the timber or before whatever material is used gets placed. So these knives are what we call full tang knives, which when you're looking at the handle once it's fully constructed, you'll actually be able to see the metal all the way around the handle. Nothing's enclosed, nothing's hidden which we believe does give it that little bit more of longevity, longevity, a little bit more strength, and it keeps the knife nice and sturdy. Uh, you get hidden tangs, which is where you can see the, uh, you can only see the handle material, whether that's bone or whether that's timber, um, which they're typically glued on and if you're lucky, they might have a, 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 a pin to lock them in place. We do all of the pinning on the handles ourselves. And I'm looking into intricate file work so that we can actually create patterns in the tang of the, uh, the handle. So again, just getting that blade up to be glowing hot working our way gradually up towards non-magnetic. Once non-magnetic, we are going to quench in oil. This knife in particular is 1084 high carbon steel, which if you use a high carbon knife, you need to be really careful with the knives. So when it comes to washing the knife, you need to dry the knife straight away. And this is because high carbon knives are not like your stainless steel knives. If you leave them wet, they will rust and they will form a patina or a tarnish on the blade. If you're not going to be using the knife for a long period of time, we recommend that you oil the blade just to give it a protective coating. So. The good side, or one of the big positives to high carbon steel knives, is their edge retention. They're a lot harder than a stainless steel knife, which means that they'll hold their cutting edge for a lot longer, which will make your time in the kitchen, I would imagine, much more pleasant than trying to cut with a dull knife. 
one of the most recent knives that we've done. I actually used it to test and it was shaving sharp. I had the smoothest forearm on the block. Alright, so we just give it a quick test with the magnet. We are still fully magnetic. Remembering we want to hit that sweet spot. It's between 820 and 850 degrees centigrade or 1800 to 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. When I say that this thing's bloody hot, it's bloody hot. You'll know it if you drop it on your foot. spots on the on the blade which to me looking directly into the forge they show up as a dark gray patch on the blade or a duller form of the uh, the yellowy orange that we can see in the middle of the blade we're now non-magnetic so we just need the tip and the heel of the blade to follow suit and catch up time to quench. If you're lucky you might even see a little bit of flame coming out from the oil. We use oil instead of water for this type of steel in particular. You can get water hardening steels but they tend to be your, uh, your tool steels. For example what you would make a hammerhead out of that's a W1 steel. The W stands for water hardening and the reason why we do oil hardening instead of water for this type of steel in particular, this steel doesn't want to be cooled down as quickly as what water will. There's some steels that you need to use liquid nitrogen to actually cool them down to a sufficient temperature fast enough. There's also other types of steel that we want to quench with air just simply by waving them through the air. There's others that want to be cooled down very, very slowly using vermiculite. Vermiculite's a, uh, a special fire retardant um, material, which for those of you who don't know, I used to work in construction and I used to do vermiculite spray on buildings. And it's becoming quite popular, popular now because the, the vermiculite when it's bonded onto steel, actually helps to protect the beams and helps to save lives because it gives firefighters that little bit of extra time to get people out of fires. It's a really, really important, uh, important thing that's been finding its way into the construction in industry lately. Really good to see, especially with this Australia and 
amount of fires that we do have. But I tell you what, the Aussies are on to it. Right now it's right at the very tip of the blade. That's the last point that we need to get hot. I'm just going to slow down my passes, allowing the blade, the tip of the blade to soak in that heat and catch up to everywhere else. things that make all the difference. In theory this knife, if it's heat treated correctly, I should be able to hold it by the handle and drop it straight on its tip. And I'll tell you what, that would be a great test if, uh, if my cojones were big enough to actually do that. I think if it folded over, I would just cry. As I said, there's 40 hours worth of work that goes into each knife. One day I, uh, I reckon I will give it a go. I'll see who fares off better, our knives or the concrete.
so, so close. stop talking but uh, <laughs> this is kind of a, a high pressure point I really do get lost sometimes in what I'm doing and I do try, I do try to be mindful of the fact that you guys are sitting here watching a uh, forge with the white noise going I do try to be interesting I don't know if I am or not hopefully you guys will tell us down in the comments but we're about to do a good old-fashioned countdown. I'd love it if you guys would count along at home with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Into the quench. Moving the blade up and down because of the heat of the blade, it's going to create a lot of air bubbles, and that air bubbles locks in the heat around the blade, which will mess up our temper, our quench. We do not want to mess that up. So we keep plunging it around, mixing it around, giving it a good dunk. right now has come out looking black. That oil has created a hard casing now over the rest of the blade, which is just the carbon that's built up. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but it is black upon black upon black, which is beautiful, because when you see what happens when you peel away that, the bright silver that shows through is absolutely stunning. those knives going to if they're not in our kitchen? That's a great question, Mel. So, those knives are going to be going to the Kuyong Tennis Club. One of uh, the executive chef up at the Kuyong Tennis Club already has one of our knives, and uh, young master Chris has sent me no less than six messages just to uh, tell me how much he absolutely loves his knife. So much so that he's ordered another two and I think that he's about to, uh, to enlist his other chefs to lift their game and get one of these knives as well. I don't know how you guys are feeling. I think I'm going to let the video keep going. So for those of you who have watched me this far, I really do appreciate your time and thanks for coming along. If you want to stick around for a bit longer, I'd appreciate that even more. Just being out here in the shed, just me and the forge, it's a little bit late. I would normally have Mel out here with me, but Mel informs me that it's bloody cold out here. I said she's just not sitting close enough to the forge. <laughs> Thank you. 
theory for round two. If you were wondering what I was doing just at the back of the forge there, I was actually placing a brick over uh, over the back of the back hole there. There we go, the girl's gone and made a lawyer out of me, out she comes. I want you to be lonely. Nothing like a good old fashioned call out to get her out. It's great. Please guys, right now I'm actually looking for my uh, my wire brush, which I've played hide and don't peek with. So if you don't, if you do have any questions, please drop them below now while I'm uh, trying to find my stuff so that I can actually answer any of your questions. The wire brush here is to brush off any of the forge scale or fire scale. The reason why I want to do that is I don't really want any divots or any rough marks because it will leave a rough mark in the blade. G'day Aiden, good to see you. G'day Jaden, good to see you. All right, if we haven't got any more questions, I'm uh, gonna start passing the blade through the forge again, getting it up to forging temperature. Ah, not forging temperature. Jeez, I'm getting my words mixed up. Getting it up to quenching temperature. So again, we're aiming for non-magnetic, and then we'll drop straight into the quench. Given that we've got Mel out here, I'm a, I'm, I can only assume that Mel's watching this live on her phone. She can read out any uh, questions that anybody has, which means it, you don't have to look at me while I'm sitting here silent, concentrating on the knife. She can give me somewhat of a distraction. Hopefully that's you guys. guys were watching last night you would have seen that the Nikiri took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to and that's because the blade height so the, the measurement from the spine of the blade or the back of the blade to the cutting edge is a lot thicker on this blade than what it is on the Kiritsuki it's almost one third bigger which means that the steel does take that little bit of extra time to heat up but we'll get there I reckon you could properly cook a marshmallow in about 0 0.03 of a second. I reckon if you left it in there for 0 0.05 of a second, it'd be burnt. Jaden said hello, sweetheart. G'day, lovely. How are you, mate? And hi to meet you. Hi, Jaden. Jaden and I go way back. Never went to high school together, but you wouldn't know it. Young Mr. Pearl there has had the privilege of working with me at one of my other numerous jobs when I used to make star, uh, steel star post pickets out in North Geelong. He was one of the few who may actually remember me with my long hair that I could actually tie back. Fun facts with Sam, I used to be able to, my hair was so long, I used to be able to grab it behind my own back. Jaden, this is a family show. I'll have no comments on that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're looking really, really good through the tip of the blade to the midsection of the blade. We're just trying to push that heat further back into the heel. How we looking, Mel? Any other questions? No, the caveman, that was impressive. This 
week I've uh, out of the blue had a request from my nephew who's just found out that we uh, oh, Arnie Mel's let me play with fire out in the shed I even get to poke metal with it so he wants to drop out and actually come and try his own hand at uh, forging the knife I'm a little bit excited for getting the young lad away from the computer and then teaching him how to use his hands, get some skills. It'll be a good thing. Aiden would like to know what's the purpose of this process over what we watched last night. All right, so last night we were annealing the steel. And if you were here with us, or if you weren't here with us, more to the point, annealing the steel is essentially making it relax. When you work the steel, it builds up a lot of stress and a lot of tension. Think of like when you've had a really hard day at work. You're overworked, you're underpaid, you feel really, really stressed. Now, if you don't release that stress, Wow, this is about to go real philosophical. If you don't relieve, release the stress, the steel will crack. There may be hairline cracks through the core of the steel that you can't see. It may manifest on the surface, but it's a weakness. It's a weak point in the blade. And the last thing that we want is, especially for this, which will be used for pumpkins, rock melon, stuff like that, very hard fruit and vegetables. If there's a weakness in that blade, then you're potentially going to have half the blade fly off mid-swing. Now, this one, this, what we're doing here tonight is quenching or hardening the steel. This is what will keep your cutting edge. This is what gives the blade the toughness. It's going to make the, bl the, the blade as hard as hard can be. So we've worked the, worked the steel, we've made it stressed, we've relieved it, and now we're going to harden it. The problem with, uh, with the steel being stressed and you not annealing the steel as well, some parts of the steel will be harder than others. Man, I don't know about you guys, but you should see Mel's face. It's almost like I'm dropping a whole heap of dirty jokes. She is giggling upon giggling off in the background when she should be reading comments. She's looking at me like I'm using euphemisms. I'm just talking about me hard steel. I didn't mention wood. We're talking about relieving stress. <laughs> Aiden said also or just the blade? Uh, just the blade buddy. So the, the because the tang won't be getting quenched there's no real need to be uh, to be going that far but when you harden the steel it, it, it does increase how brittle it is. It's a real fine line between getting a flexible blade and a, a strong blade. Your thin, flexible blades are really, really good, but they're typically made out of stainless steel, which is not a bad thing, but stainless steel, it says it all in the name. It stains less. So it's not stain-proof, but it stains less, but it also doesn't harden as much as high-carbon steel. So the edge retention on the high-carbon blades are far better than with a stainless knife. These guys are designed for straight out performance, but you've also got to care for the blade. So to answer your question, no, we don't harden the actual, the, the tang of the blade or the handle of the blade, pure and simply because that, that's not going to be functional. We want the handle to actually be softer than the blade so that when we are cutting through hard pieces of fruit and vegetable, that there's some give in the blade. We want somewhere for the shock and the stress of use to actually go so that we're not developing cracks or fractures within the blade. 
Just let me know, does that answer what you're wanting to know, buddy? I'm not sure about Aiden, but Jaden's finding it uh, difficult not to make jokes. Ah. And uh, Matt has said, hey Sam, slower. Slower? Am I talking too fast? Or what? Or what? Aiden said yes and answers his question. And Jaden said he's glad that he's not there, otherwise he'd be laughing along with me. <laughs> yeah, I need a bit of a clarification on the slower. Are you talking about it? trying to get me to slow down how hard it gets or <laughs> I'm a little confused I feel like this has really gone downhill I'm not gonna lie oh, real quick check we are non-magnetic except for near the tank so right in the heel of the blade is the last point that we need to get hot now. I just wanted to say again, I know I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to keep on saying it. I think you guys are awesome for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate all the questions as well. Temperature in the shed now, Mel. Temperature's good, but my feet are still cold. <laughs> Need to put some axe on. Aggies on, though. Yeah. Matt said you need to slow the thrust. <laughs> guys can you guys let me know can you hear me okay I really do feel like I'm yelling just because the forge is so loud Call that out and not bloody tell me. <laughs> Stop it, Jaden and Matthew. Remember, this is a family show. Try and at least keep it M rated, guys. I know it's after nine, but you know. Audio's fine. <laughs> Thank you. And Matt's going to stop now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's play the countdown game again. Ten. Nine. Nine. <laughs> eight. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I could only imagine what they're saying. They're saying now that my hands are bobbing up and down in a bloody tube. <laughs> Matt said the audio is all clear and audible. Roger that. Jaden said he's being tame. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've got no doubt he is. <laughs> because that's still hot. <laughs> right. Now skating along the edge, this file's not actually biting into the blade. It's just skating across like glass. And it's not biting in on any one section. What this means is that the blade is hardened the full length of the cutting edge. Get the Nakiri. Same thing. It just skates across the edge, which is exactly what we wanted. It means that our blade is hardened and is now now ready to move on to the next step. Matt said it was a little bit too dark to see the quench properly. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was actually going to flame up or not. But unfortunately, to be able to get things the way that we need to, so that you guys can see it well, I'm just trying to make uh, make as best use of the shed as I can. And unfortunately, I've still got too much stuff bloody everywhere. So we'll uh, we'll try and improve that for you guys as time goes on. Ever aiming to get better and improve. <laughs> G'day AJ, good to see that you're on. Alright guys, I'm going to cut it off there. And um, yeah, as I said, if there's any more questions, drop them below. If there's any more dirty jokes, yeah. Nah, look, I'm not going to lie, drop them below too. That's cool too. Maybe PM them. Well, or you can PM, that's cool. <laughs> right, Mel. Thanks for watching guys, I really do appreciate your time. I really do appreciate you guys joining in. The next step will be polishing the blades. So we're going to take them all the way down to their cutting edge. We're going to take off all the forge scale and start to get handles ready for uh, moving towards the final piece. Thank you guys. As I said, we have got the new YouTube channel coming up. Please jump over and give that a like and uh, hit the notification bell so that you receive the new videos. That is Honey Sauce Geelong on YouTube. Thanks for, thanks for coming along and we will see you again soon. Take care.